The Hawaiian Islands are the most secluded land masses on the planet. Hawaii also has an invasive species problem. Now that might make some of you out there confused. How could the most secluded landmass on the planet have an invasive species problem? Through things like illegal pet trade and even the intentional introduction of some animals, Hawaii is in the middle of an invasive species problem. Hey guys, I'm Raymond Tiller and today I'm going to be telling you all about Hawaii's invasive species issue. The best trip I've ever taken took place in Hawaii. I was absolutely astounded by the beauty of these islands and the wildlife that called it home, which is why I wanted to make this video. Like I said, Hawaii is the most secluded landmass on the planet, with the closest land being located over 2,300 miles away in California. It took a lot of willpower and miracles for life to begin on these islands in the first place. And since these islands are so remote, their ecosystems are incredibly fragile. Hawaii is made up of four main islands supporting lush rainforests, tall mountains, and pristine beaches. If you've never been to Hawaii, you've probably seen it in movies or TV shows. Hawaii was made most famous by the movie Jurassic Park, which also happens to be my favorite movie. However, over the past few decades, Hawaii has lost more native species than any other state, with over 70% of its native birds being declared extinct. Over time, Hawaiian animals have evolved not to be as competitive as other animals. There's never the introduction of new species, therefore they've never had to be real competitive for food. This is why invasive species are a major threat to Hawaii. All it takes is one animal to ruin an entire island's ecosystem. With that being said, let's move on to the first animal on our list, the Veiled Chameleon. The Veiled Chameleon is one of the most photogenic chameleons on the planet. They're distinct in the fact that they have a large spike on top of their head, which is actually used to filter water down into their mouths. These animals are native to the Middle East, and the Veiled Chameleon was introduced in Hawaii through the pet trade. It's illegal to import any reptile into the Hawaiian Islands, which makes this pet trade illegal. The Veiled Chameleon was first sighted in 2004, and since then, some populations have become established in the wild. This animal is an arboreal species, spending most of their time in the trees. The Veiled Chameleon preys on insects, flowers, small birds, and more. Of course, this chameleon uses its tongue to catch its prey. The Veiled Chameleon's tongue can reach one and a half times its own body length, growing up to 24 inches in some cases. This chameleon is one of the largest larger of its species. Of course, this chameleon can be hard to spot in the wild due to the fact that this animal can change the color of its skin slightly to blend in with its environment. While on Hawaii, they've been preying on Hawaii's native insects and birds. But surprisingly, they aren't Hawaii's only invasive chameleon, with the Jackson's chameleon also being an issue. Currently, there are projects underway to control the spread of these reptiles, so hopefully their population can be limited in the future. Now before we continue on, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe with notifications turned on so you never miss out on new videos. It may be surprising to some, but Hawaii has no native snake species. This probably sounds good for all you hikers out there, but there's recently been the introduction of the brown tree snake. Hence the name, this snake spends a lot of its time hidden away in trees, where their brown coloration helps them blend in. The brown tree snake can reach lengths of up to 7 feet, but are pretty skinny for a snake. These snakes are mildly venomous, but are not seen as deadly, as there hasn't been a reported death from a brown tree snake bite. These snakes are native to the Indo-Pacific, and this is not the first time they've been an invasive species. During World War II, these snakes were introduced to the island of Guam, after sneaking into the landing gear of planes. The brown tree snake established a population on the island, and it made several of Guam's native animals go extinct. It's estimated that there are currently 50 brown tree snakes per acre in Guam, which is just insane to think about. So far, only 8 have been identified in Hawaii, but if they were to establish a population, it could very very well mean the end for Hawaii's ecosystems, as the brown tree snake is incredibly destructive. If they were to become established, it could also cost Hawaii up to $400 million per year, which is insanely expensive. However, every shipment that comes in from Guam is searched, trying to ensure that the brown tree snake doesn't get onto the islands. Moving on, we have the barn owl. The barn owl might just be the most common owl found throughout the world. Hence the name, these owls like to nest up in barns a lot of the time. These owls are nocturnal hunters 
creatures, feeding on rodents, small reptiles, and more. They can grow to have a wingspan of up to 50 inches, making them a large raptor. The barn owl was introduced in Hawaii in 1958 to help control rodent populations on sugarcane farms. At the time, 15 were introduced, but over the years 71, more were brought over to Hawaii. However, as soon as they got onto the island, their hunting habits changed. They still hunted some rodents, but the barn owls started targeting some of Hawaii's native birds. Their main targets are the native Hawaiian petrel along with the share water. These owls have a very distinct shrieking call, which can make them easier to find in the wild. <laughs> However, Hawaii also has a native species of owl called the poe. This owl is smaller than the barn owl, but it competes against the barn owl for food. Hopefully, the barn owl doesn't become more established in Hawaii, so its native bird species can recover. Next on the list, we have the small Indian mongoose. Now, you're probably used to seeing videos online of mongooses fighting venomous snakes. However, that won't be happening in Hawaii. Small Indian mongooses are native to Southern Asia and were introduced in Hawaii in 1883 to help control the road population. These animals have become established in Hawaii and are causing a lot of damage to its ecosystem. These animals did help control the rodent population to an extent, but started feeding on the eggs of ground nesting birds in Hawaii, while also picking off sea turtle eggs laid in the sand. The small Indian mongoose is known to be incredibly smart. These animals feed on basically anything smaller than themselves, including insects, small birds, eggs, and even reptiles. Now this isn't the first time the small Indian mongoose has been an issue, as they're blamed for the extinction of ground nesting birds in Jamaica. This has helped land them on the world's 100 worst invasive species list. These animals live alone or in very small groups, which makes them hard to track down. Combine that with their incredible intelligence and the act for eating anything smaller than themselves, the small Indian mongoose is a problem for Hawaii. Next, we have the peacock grouper, which is a fish that I saw with my own eyes while diving in Hawaii. Most of the animals that live in Hawaii are marine animals. The waters surrounding these islands are rich with life, but it's currently under threat. These groupers are native to the Indo-Pacific, but were introduced in Hawaii in the 1950s. Yes, these groupers were introduced intentionally to the islands, as the people living there were hoping they would become a new game fish and source of food. However, it was found out shortly after that these peacock grouper can cause ciguatera poisoning. This is a terrible condition that causes vomiting, diarrhea, and more. These fish have become heavily established in Hawaii. The peacock grouper is an ambush predator, feeding on small fish and even crustaceans. The peacock grouper can consume up to 200 reef fish per year in Hawaii. They come in at an average length of 24 inches, which isn't very large for a grouper, but not that small either. Just like you see with lionfish in the Caribbean, there are spearfishing tournaments around the islands where they specifically look for the peacock grouper. This is a great effort put forward to try and stop the spread of the peacock grouper. The ocean environment around Hawaii is already incredibly fragile, which makes the peacock grouper a major threat to Hawaii. I also wanted to take a moment to talk about the invasive parakeets on Hawaii. So far, this has only been a problem on the island of Kauai, but it's become a huge issue. How these parakeets got established is actually a pretty crazy story. In the 1960s, a couple of parakeets were kept as pets at a bed and breakfast, where they soon escaped, started multiplying, and have become established on the island of Kauai. It's estimated that there are over 5,000 parakeets living on Kauai today. It might be an understatement to say that these birds are incredibly smart, and they've even been observed avoiding and recognizing farmers who have threatened them. These birds pose a huge threat to Hawaii's crops. They love to feed on locally grown fruit, which hurts Hawaii's economy. These parakeets cost Hawaii hundreds of thousands of dollars per year and are a threat to Kauai's ecosystem. Hawaii's ecosystem is incredibly fragile, and it's invasive animals like these that are a threat to not only Hawaii's ecosystems, but its economy, which is why Hawaii is doing everything it can to avoid invasive animals. Alright guys, now that is pretty much going to wrap up today's video, but before you go, make sure to smash that like button, comment down below what you think, and most importantly, subscribe with notifications turned on so you never miss out on awesome videos just like this one. I'm Raymond Tiller, and I'll see you on the next video.